Hey Oceanside and welcome to the booth. Today we've got lots of news about the 2021 Global Equip Conference, Good Friday, Easter and the 180 Easter Egg Hunt that's coming up this weekend. Uh, but firstly, yes, it's Good Friday and Easter Sunday this coming weekend. Can you believe it? It's been a whole year of COVID. Not cool, but this is such a significant time for us as a church. So we are having two services like we normally do over this amazing weekend. Good Friday, we're gonna be online at 9.30 a.m. Uh, just like we do our Sunday service. And as well on Sunday, we'll be having an online service as well that you can tune into us. Easter is a great time where people who don't normally participate in our community are receptive to the gospel. So we've got some posts online uh, that we're inviting people in to share with our online services. So get online and spread the word. And you might have heard that the provincial government is actually allowing outdoor services to take place. So in the coming days, we're gonna have news for you about what we're doing. And we are hoping to as well, while we're having an online version for Easter Sunday, to actually have a physical service of 50 people or two 50 person services outside. We don't know just yet, so stay tuned to your email this week as we make those announcements. We can't wait to see you in the flesh once again soon. So speaking of spreading the word and getting the message of Easter out there, uh, do you remember that massive Easter community service that we put on every year at the Port Theatre? Well, obviously that's not happening this year, but some of the churches in Nanaimo, in fact, most of the churches in Nanaimo have come together again this year and we'll be releasing an online version of that service on Saturday. You know, it features some radical testimonies in there. It features worship, the gospel, breaking bread, and multiple different clips from all churches around the city as we we come together and acknowledge that we have this common unity in Christ and what happens on this weekend. Uh, Oceanside was able to get a full band back together. We filmed in the gymnasium at the school and we're providing that for this service. It's such a privilege for them to ask us to do that. So head online on Saturday morning, watch it for yourself and share it to our local community as well. Again, Easter is an amazing, amazing time to share what God has done. And you know people are receptive this year um, to hearing a message of hope, a message of love, and all of that stuff. So, and lastly for Easter, but probably the group that's gonna be having the most fun this year is our 180 kids. That's right, if you didn't hear the announcement last week, we are having a massive 180 Easter egg hunt this coming Saturday morning. Now, there's a couple of things you need to know, and number one is parents. Head to oceansidechurch.ca forward slash register to book your kids into one of the half hour time slots. Do that right now because spots are filling up fast. The two sessions we posted last week filled up real quick, so we've opened even more sessions now and we'll maybe make one or two more available if those fill up too. Second thing you need to know is when you book, you need to make sure that you arrive a couple of minutes early for those time slots. Again, it's a half an hour Easter egg hunt and we're gonna get going quickly and we're gonna be efficient to get kids, the maximum amount of kids through in a safe amount of numbers uh, that we do that. So come early, arrive on time so they can get hunting and share the Easter story after they've found all their awesome chocolate Easter eggs. And we know that you parents are gonna look forward to taking your kids home all sugared up uh, for amazing, uh, energy packed afternoon and then the dramatic crash that comes later uh, with chocolate filled children. So that's gonna be great. Can't wait for Easter. My kids are stoked uh, and I see some of you there. Uh, and the last thing you need to know is parents, you're gonna have to stay outside the fence during the event. We know that you'd love to take part in the Easter egg hunt, um, but please stay outside. This is just, we're just being able to do this for the kids, um, but we'll have lots of helpers around for the younger kids. But on that note, if your kid is taking part, they need to be be able to take part without you beside them. You know, maybe they got a little bit clingy in the last year. So please make sure your kids are ready and prepped to get in there and have a blast uh, without you by their side as you won't be able to come into the grounds. Um, so ages two to 12 are welcome. It's gonna be a blast. And kids, we have some expert egg hiders this year. So you're gonna have to come with your A game, okay? This isn't no simple Easter egg hunt, you gotta come ready uh, for an adventure. It's gonna be an amazing time. Register now, steal your parents' laptop, go online and get your sport. It's gonna be amazing and hopefully we get some good weather. Um, now, switching gears into something new that we haven't talked about yet is today we wanna share with you about what's happening with the NCMI Global Equip Conference. As you know, this was canned and canceled in 2020 for some obvious reasons, but some big news today is that the team have announced that they are pushing 
pushing forward for 2021 in South Africa in faith towards the end of this year. For those that you for those of you that are new to our community, NCMI, that's New Covenant Ministries International, is a group of apostolic churches that we were planted out of and at Oceanside belongs to and partners with. And about every five years, there's a global conference in South Africa. Uh, South Africa was where this, uh, where this church was birthed out of, and we all come together again in, in unity, and it's a massive thing. And uh, we've just got a video from Tyrone here who leads the NCMI apostolic team with more on this exciting, exciting news. Here you are. Hey everybody, I'm super excited to announce that our Global Equip is still on and it is happening and it's happening later on this year. I realize these are crazy days and everybody's kind of living in the unknown of so many things. But the one thing we do know is that we need to get together. We need to connect. We need these big moments. And so the good news is it's on. The only thing you do need to be aware of is that we've had to move the time one week earlier than what we had scheduled it because of the limitations and restrictions of the government in South Africa. And so right now we've now moved it to 28th of September to October the 1st. Now friends, also to know that we're going to meet in seven different regions across South Africa and in multiple venues. You do need to know that it's still live, that there's going to be international guys ministering from all over the world, and we're going to go to, we're going to meet together. It's not going to be recorded stuff. It's live. It's us celebrating the King and the Kingdom. We need these moments. I, I realize that there are restrictions. I realize there's some fear maybe that's gripped some of our hearts and so on, but I really am challenging you, encouraging you. Come join us. Come be with us. It's going to be a phenomenal time we had two options we either cancel it or we get on with some kind of gathering and we have felt in faith let's get together let's celebrate and let's get this done so it's going to be a superb time kingdom 40 years celebration of what God's done but also more importantly what God wants to do dreaming about this incredible future across the world and into the nations it's it's going to be a great time of exalting Christ getting to know some of the mates and friends around the world connecting reconnecting and the value of partnership we've just booked our tickets for myself and my family we're coming we're going to be there we can't wait to be there and I challenge you Get planning, get booking, more details to follow. But I can say this, get your tickets booked. It's in South Africa. Get going. And we cannot wait to see you there. God bless. Thanks, Ty. Super exciting news, hey? Church, as you know, things are looking up as we head forward into the spring, summer, and as countries complete their vaccine rollouts in the coming months. So we really do believe as a church in this time, it's actually time to lift our eyes up from the current season and into the next one that God is really thrusting us into. So please note those dates, September 28th to October 1st in South Africa, Pray in faith, head to ncmi.net and find out all about it. And remember, we have so many partnering churches in South Africa that we have great relationships with. So it's not even just about a three-day conference. You know, that's a long way to go. You could go there for a few weeks and have an amazing time connecting with the believers there, having an amazing holiday as well. And bonus, it's going to be nice and hot there while it's starting off to be winter here. So even a better reason to, to go there at the end of this year. Um, so yeah, we're praying in faith that we can uh, send people from our church over there, including some of you guys. So that's great. That's it for the booth today. Uh, thanks for listening and see you again soon. Good morning, Oceanside Church, and welcome to our Sunday live stream. It is wonderful to have you here with us. This morning, we've got a great morning. We've got worship. We've got a word from Nathan Johnson, and uh, we are just excited to have you here with us. There has been um, just lots on my heart today as I think about the week that's coming. We know this is such a significant week as we look to Good Friday, as we look to Easter that's coming. Um, you know, it's a great time for us to really ready our hearts. And um, there's a psalm that's been on my heart, and I want to read it, and it's Psalm 68. And this is in the New Living Translation, verses 19 to 20. It says, Praise the Lord, praise God our Savior. For each day he carries us in his arms. Our God is a God who saves. The sovereign Lord rescues us from death. And as we look towards what's coming this week and what we celebrate and how significant it is to us in our faith, I would just encourage you um, really just to take the time because he is a God that carries us each day. And I know there's people going through stuff 
that's big, that's hard. And so many times in the last couple of weeks, I'm praying for people, there's so little I feel like I can do, except I know that I can pray that God continues to carry them through the day to day. And um, yeah, he is a God that saves. He's a powerful God. And he is this incredible king that went to the cross for us. So just encourage you this morning as we worship, as you go through your week, just get your hearts ready as we think about all that Easter means for us and our faith and all that Jesus has done for us. So let's go into worship. Lord, I just thank you for this time. I thank you that we get to worship you in spirit and in truth. We are so grateful, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. We love you and we lift you up wherever we are this morning. You give life, you are love, you bring life to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart.
your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord cause all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great Welcome again if you're just joining us. So we know that, like I said, this is a big week coming up. We've got some services and I want to give you some info on that. So Good Friday, we have a service online, 930. So you'll want to check that out. We'll be streaming like we normally do through YouTube, Facebook. Um, then we also have our Easter Sunday online that we talked about. And that is exciting because with some restrictions that have changed with the government, some of you guys may have heard, but we are gonna be releasing some more information on that, but we are hoping to have an in-person, in-person service on Easter Sunday here at the J. Um, but like I said, we'll be releasing some more details for that. So check your email. If you're signed up for our newsletter, that's gonna be going out on our newsletter Tuesday afternoon, what that will look like, how you register and all of the details. So if you're not signed up for our newsletter, go ahead and do that. Go to oceansidechurch.ca slash newsletter and be the first to know we are excited, very excited, and um, all of that info will be there. We're still kind of working out the details as things change very quickly in this time, as I'm sure you're aware. So registration will be on our website. When we know the details, you will know the details. And as we have said in the last couple of weeks, the government has also encouraged us to meet outside safely, social distance in groups of 10. So get with your connect groups, get with people that you've been missing, keep your distance. If the sun is shining, have a great time and just let's keep connecting, keep pushing into community. It's really important and it's really valuable guys. So let's keep doing it. 
And now we're going to go to a message from our very own Nathan Johnson. So, Lord, we just thank you for Nathan. We thank you for the word that is on our heart. And we just pray that we would have hearts to receive it, ears to hear it, and to apply it. Well, thank you so much for uh, connecting with us this week. I have the privilege of sharing the message. My name's Nathan. And uh, just this idea that God has the strategy during intimidating times. And so uh, last week, Paul shared about standing firm. And I really feel this message will be a continuation. A lot of times in our life, I think we can rely on our own strength, talents, and connections, even human rationale to try to navigate our way through situations, trouble, and difficulty. Not only that, but there are so many voices out there, so many voices in this world offering, well, their version of wisdom. I think sometimes we can forget that God knows it all. He sees all. He is our source. We sometimes exhaust ourselves trying to work through adversity rather than going straight to him. And so through this message, I believe we will see a practical example of what it looks like to stand firm and keep God as our source of strength, wisdom, and truth when you are being intimidated by circumstances around you. So like I said, today we're gonna take a look at, well, an Old Testament story about one of the good kings in history the history of Judah. And many of you know that good kings, well, in the historical record of Israel and Judah, they were very hard to come by. And so I just wanted to go back to a quick family tree and and the point in the biblical history. And I want to catch us up to the picture, the significance of what was happening here. And so let's just quickly start with, with this small family tree. So first, Abraham and Sarah, well, they have Isaac. And Isaac and Rebekah have Jacob. Jacob has 12 sons, and they eventually make up the 12 tribes of Israel. And unfortunately, they split. The northern kingdoms under the banner of Israel and the southern kingdoms under Judah. And so we go down the list, and eventually we get to Hezekiah. And Hezekiah was one of the few that did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. The Bible goes on to describe Hezekiah and his admirable track record, saying there's no king like him in all of Judah, before or after. He begins to boldly clean house. He brings about revival in Judah and tears down the idols, the altars, and various places of pagan worship that had lured Israel away from worship, from worshiping God, Yahweh. He restores and reopens the temple in Jerusalem. Well, that his dad, his not so good dad had really kind of boarded up. He reinstates um, the Levites, the priesthood, as he also celebrates the Passover again. And if we look at 2 Kings, starting at 18 verse 7, it tells us that he even went on to rebel against the fearsome Assyrians, and he wouldn't serve them. We're going to camp out in this place within Israel's history. And so, if you want to, turn with me, 2 Kings 18, 13 to 16. Starting at verse 13. In the fourth year of King Hezekiah, Shennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, saying, I have done wrong. Withdraw from me. Whatever you impose on me, I will bear. So we can see Hezekiah was obviously intimidated by the Assyrian army closing in on Jerusalem. The Assyrians had crushed nation after nation. Their conquests were successful and they obviously made good, if you know history, on their terrible threats. 
And so as we read, Hezekiah agreed to pay the Assyrians. He, he agreed to pay them whatever they ask. And Chenacherib, king of Assyria, asked for 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. And, and if we, we look at it in pounds, one talent was 75 pounds. That's not a small amount of money. But the Bible even goes on to say that he took all of the silver out of the house of the Lord. He even took the, the gold and, and, and other silver out of the treasuries of the king. And, and it even goes further yet. And he says he, he peeled off the gold of the temple doors to cover this debt. These attacks have, have wavered his confidence and clearly shook his trust in God at his, as his source and protector. And, and I was thinking of also a, a New Testament analogy of this and, and a story, and, and I just was reminded of Peter walking on the water. How boldly he stepped out of the boat. Yet, when the waves came crashing in, he took his eyes off Jesus. He, he began to allow those surroundings to affect his gaze. And, and he forgot to keep his gaze on Jesus, the one that could keep him afloat. And, and you know, I'm sure this has never happened to any of you before, but a story from, from Megan and I was, well, we kind of, yeah, we tried to do things our own way. We were, well, you know what? We forced some sort of plan that, that wasn't God's plan. It, it was our plan, to be honest. And so in 2009, we both had started new jobs. We were in a new city and newly married. So you could say there might have been a little bit of transition happening in our lives. And before long, some of the less perfect realities began to sink in. Okay, and I may get in trouble, but we weren't super taken initially by Nanaimo. I'm sorry, diehard Nanaimoites, initially. You know what? We, we just weren't super big fans of the differences and the challenges we were experiencing in our new jobs com compared to some of the old ones that we had. I know, pretty mature, isn't it? So you know what we did? Okay, well, let's abandon all the hard stuff and let's make a change right now. And we both always wanted to travel more. Me being a te teacher and, well, Megan being a nurse, obviously our professions lent ourselves and it lent to working in other places around the world and traveling. So we started looking for opportunities, yet that was not what God had for us. He didn't have it planned at that time. What's amazing is shortly after we got plugged into Oceanside, which gave us opportunities to travel to India, Nepal, parts of Africa, and one of those places being the Democratic Republic of Congo. And what I love about this is that was a place that had been planted in Megan's heart as a young girl, in elementary school, actually. It would be over two decades before she realized the connection she'd have with this country and its people. I know, I know, that's showing our age, but if we had followed our own whims and strategies and jump ship for out of Nanaimo to grasp at others. Maybe, maybe these opportunities looked suitable and we probably could have pushed down the doors elsewhere, but we would have missed all the beautiful connections we had and the opportunities to forge in this community and communities around the world. You see, God always has the best solutions and strategies. You know, our ideas, they can be good, but if, if I just suggest, you, you don't just follow those on a whim. You trust, you trust the Holy Spirit. You spend time praying and allow God to show you His strategies because they're always good. And so we see that Hezekiah didn't like what was in front of him either. He tried doing things his own way as well. And, and if we go back to the beginning of 2 Kings 18, we see Hezekiah boldly removing all the platforms of pagan worship. 
He, he ushered in revival in Judah. And, and in verse 7, it even tells us that he refused to serve the king of Assyria. And now, and now suddenly, it's almost like he has a panic reaction and realizes that the enemy is actually getting closer and gaining ground. He's suddenly so frantic to stop the Assyrian king from advancing further that he rips the gold out of the temple that he had just reopened. Maybe if he, if he pays tribute, he, he can just hold them off longer. You see, he's, he's using human rationale to try to come up with a solution. How could things change so quickly? You know, why, why did Hezekiah, why did his trust seem to vanish so suddenly when circumstances intensified? Can you relate? I, I definitely know that I can. I, can. I can look at the physical, tangible things I have first. Maybe it's, maybe it's life insurance in my, in my bank account, my health, connections, family around me for a solution. And you know what? This isn't the solution. How easily I know I can look to my surroundings to define my level of peace or our faith in God. We need to discipline ourselves and remind ourselves to go to God in all things first. So that, so that we don't panic when our circumstances intensify. And so let's read further. Let's, let's read how truly big this problem the Assyrians was. And so the king sent some messengers to Jerusalem to not only scare the king, but also the people of Judah. And, and I'm sure many of us can relate to the amount of fear we're bombarded with when we maybe turn on the TV, we, we read the newspaper. It's all around us. And so now going to 2 Kings 19, verses 10 to 15. Thus, Shanachrib, king of Assyria, on what are you trusting that you endure the siege in Jerusalem? Is not Hezekiah misleading you that you may give over to die by famine and by thirst when he tells you the Lord our God will deliver us from the hands of the king of Assyria? Has not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and altars and commanded Judah and Jerusalem? Before one altar you shall worship, and on it you shall burn your sacrifices. Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the people of the lands? Were the gods of the nations of these lands all able to deliver their lands out of my hand? Who among all the gods of those nations that my fathers devoured to destruction was able to deliver his people from my hand, that your God should be able to deliver you from mine? Now, therefore, do not let Hezekiah deceive you or mislead you in this fashion, and do not believe him, for no god of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand or from the hand of my fathers." How much less will your God deliver you out of my hand? And I know this maybe it seems like a silly analogy, but when I was in university, poker all of a sudden took off. And, you know, on the weekends, every dorm lounge was full of people playing. And, of course, as poor college students, no one could ever afford to play for money. So, again, on the line was usually cleaning somebody else's apartment if you lost, or if you won, maybe using somebody's car for a date. As, again, I'm no expert in poker, this simple picture. Somebody across the table has only a pair in their hand, yet are trying to intimidate you into folding. Yet, you know what you've got in your hand. You have a full house. Yet as you look across the table, there's somebody trying to intimidate you. You're trying to determine if what you have in your hand is enough. You're playing through the options of what that other person could have. And I was thinking about that in a spiritual sense. It can be similar when the enemy comes. He has the lowest hand. 
We know we have the power. We have the power in Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father. Yet, we question in our minds when, when our backs are, are against the wall. And, and don't get me wrong, many of our situations and, and Hezekiah's situation was super intimidating. It was scary. There, there was lots at stake. There was famine, thirst, and, and death could happen to his people. He was in charge to protect his people. And so there was a lot riding on this. And again, his em- enemies trying to intimidate, they, they not only talked to him, but they talked to the people. They, they threatened and shouted in Hebrew so that the people of that day could hear and be intimidated also. Adversity is coming for you. Loss is coming for you, they were barking. And, and maybe you feel that as well at times. That, that there are lots of voices in this world that are going to try to water down the power and authority of God. And I want to encourage you, do not forget who he is, what he's done and what he continues to do. Like that person with the full house, you're standing in victory. I would even say a royal flesh. And yet, what I love about this story is as we continue to read, and it, is we see Hezekiah returning back to, to the chapter 18 Hezekiah, the beginning of 18. He's, he's starting to come to his senses after, after doing, trying to do things his own way. That, that he figured out that, do you know what? My strategy isn't going to work. work I, I can't fix this problem. It's much bigger than me. And so in 2 Kings 19, 14 to 19, Hezekiah prays. And in verse 14, it says, Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned above the cherubim, you are the God. You alone of all the kingdoms of all the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see and hear the words of Shennacherib, which has sent to mock the living God. Truly, O Lord, the king of Assyria has laid waste to the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the work of man's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they were destroyed. So now, O Lord, our God, save us, please, from his hand, that all the kings of earth may know that you, O Lord, are God alone. And I just love that. As as soon as Hezekiah received the enemy's threats in letter form, he went to the temple. He spread it out before God. He cast it upon the Lord as he laid it out. He wanted to just, God, see everything. There's nothing fancy here. Like, I'm not sugarcoating it. Like, like God, everything. I, I want you to hear it. He went to God. And now he's getting back to this first move. It was to go to God. He didn't rely on his own strategy or his own power. He didn't even go to his trusted advisors that he as the king would have had. He didn't seek opinions of other people. He simply went to God. Sometimes we just need to get out of the way and let God intervene for us. And because of this genuine prayer, God has an amazing response. Now, what I love about Scripture is we see this story also in 2 Chronicles. And so in 2 Chronicles 32, 21 to 23, it says this, And the Lord sent an angel who cut off all the mighty warriors and commanders and officers in the camp of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. 
And when he came into the house of his God, some of his own sons struck him down there by the sword. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Shennacherib, king of Assyria, and from the hand of all his enemies, and provided for them on every side. And many brought gifts to the Lord to Jerusalem, and precious things to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations from that time onward. And so in closing, I just want to encourage us, take courage again. God hears your prayers. That, that God always has the strategy for every single situation in our lives. Everyone. When we surrender to him, we, we actually get to see him come through on our behalf in ways we could never have imagined. I just love how 2 Chronicles 16, 9, it says this, it says, For the eyes of the Lord move all over the earth, so that he may give strength to those whose heart is fully given to him. So I just want to encourage you, won't you join us in prayer, so that, so that God can have our hearts fully to him. Maybe it's through men's prayer on Tuesday night, in, in the other possible worship nights and things that are going to be happening, in, in some of the, the live services that were able to happen, won't you join with us and allow God to do what only He can do? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank You that You are all-powerful, that You are all-knowing, and that, Lord, I pray that You would just fill us with courage to be bold and brave for You. That, Lord God, if we're faced with, with decisions to make, that, God, that we would lay them as Hezekiah did before you. And that, Lord, that you are so gracious and merciful that, that you would hear our prayer. I thank you that you are a God that answers prayer. And so, Father, I pray even now that we would just get a sense of you and your presence in our lives. Today, tomorrow, in the months to come. That, Lord, that we would go to you first in all situations. That we would be known as a people that go to God. I thank you, Lord God, for working with us, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us. In the pressing, you are making new wine. In the sore light, now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you. In the pressing, you are making the wine. In the sword. Now.
authority All supremacy, Jesus Holding the scepter of justice You're seated on the throne Death could not hold you The veil tore before you you silence the walls of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now
rescue me, oh God. Let thankfulness rise in our hearts. You've rescued me, Lord, out of the miry clay to a spacious place. Out of the sinking sand and all to the rock, solid rock I stand here. Out of the sinking sand here, you separate oceans so I can walk on dry ground, O oh Lord. You quiet storms in my life, Jesus, by one word of your Shut the mouths of lions, oh God. And you're alive in me. And you're alive in me, God. You're alive. Peace and hope and love and joy. You're alive. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We pray that you have been blessed and that you have been encouraged. 180 Kids, don't forget to sign up for that Easter egg hunt coming up this Saturday. And guys, if you're not signed up for our newsletter, go and do that so that you can hear about all the upcoming details and release for some in-person services coming soon. So we will see you soon. Pray that you have a wonderful week. See you guys.